Welcome. In this video, I will show you how to pass arrays as function parameters in C++. Before I do so, I must note on two things. The first being, when arrays are passed as parameters, only the address of the first element of the array is sent as a reference parameter. This is to avoid having to copy every array element, every function call. This means arrays are always passed by reference. So when we make a function call down here where we are passing an array, see we have this names array here, we're passing it here. Well, when it comes up here, this is a pass by reference call or parameter even though there is no ampersand here. The ampersand is not needed. It will still only pass the address of the first element of the array. So the address of this Alex string. And we can do that because the memory for this array is continuous. So when we know the address of this element, we can just add the memory size to that address and it will give us the next element and then add the memory size of the string to the address and give us the next element and so on and so forth. The next thing to note is that arrays cannot be returned by functions. If you need to return an array, it must be through a parameter. So instead of being able to return an array like you can an integer in this function, you cannot do that. You would need to just update this array and you can always just update that array because it is passed by reference. Now, let us look at some functions that I have defined that take arrays as parameters. The first one being this print function right here. This print function is simply just going to print the array. It also will print out the a length of the array to the screen. So it will take an array in as a parameter and a size in as a parameter. And it will first output the size to the screen. You could calculate this size inside of this function, but we already calculate this size outside of this function down below in main, and we will see that in just a little bit. So we will just calculate that one time. So, and pass it to our functions throughout this program. So once we print out this size, we can then iterate over the array and output each, each element at, of the array as we have been doing in every video we have talked about arrays so far in, and then an end line at the end so that this array is on its own line. The next function we need to go over is this get name index. This function takes a string that is a name that the user wants to search for. It takes a, a array of strings called names, which contains elements, which are names. And then it also takes an integer, which is the size of this array. And then in this function, we can search for the name using a for loop that goes from zero to the size of the array. And then if we find the name that was passed in the names array, we can return the index of that name. Since this is called get name index, we will return the name and not return the, or return the index and not return the name. But, if we do not find that name inside of this names array, we will just come down here and we will return a negative one. Lastly, we have this print index function, which takes a name and an index, and then it will either print that, that name. Well, first off, we'll print out the name because we always want to print out the name, but then it will print out either that that name wasn't found if the index passed is less than zero. So if in down in main, we are gonna call this get name index, but if this returns a negative one, it will spit out that the name was not found. But if that name was found, this function will return an index. So 
we will output that index from this function. And we will pass that name and that index down in main to this function when we call it. Now, we will come down to main where we will create some variables, initialize them, and then call our functions. So we have a few variables in here, the first being the name that we are going to get from the user down here. We then have an array which holds some names in it, five names to be exact, Alex, Clinton, Adam, Ariel, and Lexi. And then we come down here and we could just have, you know, int size equals five up here, but let's make things a little bit different from the videos that we have already watched. And let's actually calculate the size of the array based off of the memory size of the array. So this size of function right here simply will take some variable and return the size of that variable. So this names array, we pass the entire names array to the size of function, and it will return the memory size of this names array. And then we get the size, the memory size of one element inside of that names array. And we divide that memory size of the one element into the memory size of the entire array, which will give us the size of the array, as in the length of the array, which is five in this case. And then we come down here and we call our print function, which again, just prints that names array. And we also have to pass it the size so that for loop knows how when to stop. And then we come down here and we call the get name index function and whatever this returns we're going to pass to the print index function so since parentheses are top of our order of operations these parent whatever is inside the parentheses will go first so this get name index will run first which we pass a name that we want to want to search for and a list of names and a size of this list of names and if it finds the name that we are searching for, it will return the index of that name in this names array, which we can just simply then just pass back to the print index function. If this doesn't find that name in names array, then it will return a negative one, which again, we can just pass right back to the index function, print index function without having to save it into a variable. If we needed to use that index later on, obviously we would save that into a variable. But once we do that, we will pass the index, we'll pass the name, and it will either print that the name wasn't found or what index the name was found at. So now let's actually run this program and see what we get. So we can compile it as always with G++ and the name of the program, and then we can run it with dot slash a dot out. If we enter a name that is in this list up here, we will get that the array length is five and the array printed out to the screen. We get that because this array and the size get passed to this print function, which print out the length of the array, which is right here, the array length is five, and then it just prints out each of the elements in the array, which we get right here. And then it comes down here and we get that Alex is at index zero. See, we see Alex at index zero because that we come and we pass the name that was entered here, which is Alex in this case. We pass the names array and the size of the array to this get name index. And then the get name index searches through the names array and finds Alex at index zero and that returns that zero which then gets passed to this print index function with the name that we were searching for, which prints out, it prints out the name. And then since the index is zero, that is not less than zero. So it prints out the index, which is zero. So we get Alex is at index zero. Similarly, if we run our program and type something like Clinton, you see we get Clinton is at index one. If we run it and put in Adam, we see Adam is at index two. 
If we run it and put Ariel, we see Ariel is at index three. And if we run it and put in Lexi, we get Lexi is at index four. And if we were to enter in something such as Tom, which is not in the list. Oh, sorry, we should actually run our program. If we enter in Tom, which is not in the list, we get Tom wasn't found in the list because when we pass Tom to this get name index, it is going to come up here and not find Tom in that names array in this for loop. And then it will just return this negative one. So that negative one will get passed to print index and then print index will get a negative one in this index, which is less than zero. So it will print out that the name was not found. And that is all that I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.